All right, y'all. Welcome to Solid State. I am Tim Banks. Um, just want to start off by saying that this is a Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation uh, official stream. And as such, uh, the code of conduct is in full effect here. So please be mindful of that in your comments in the chat. Um, and we will be mindful of that here. Um, please go ahead and, and, and sign on the chat. You can pop on Twitter. Uh, you can at me at El Chefe, um, and, uh, or, or hop in the chat and ask your questions here. Um, today joining us, we've got, um, a friend of mine that I, that I met on Twitter. We have hollered at a couple of times, a man that I've looked up to for a while. Um, Jerome Hardaway. Uh, Jerome Hardaway is a senior software engineer at Microsoft and the executive, uh, Executive Director of Betsu Code, um, having served in the Air Force as security forces and then transitioned to software engineering. He is focused on helping underrepresented members of the veteran community learn and break into tech. He has received numerous awards and honors due to his work, but the most rewarding part of him is easing the point of entries so others have easier paths into tech than he did. Um, Jerome, you want to say hi to everybody? Hey, y'all. Hey, how y'all doing? Very excited to be here. Like Tim is one of my favorite people on Twitter because he comes from a military background as well. So it's like we get to vibe on all the jokes that we can't say in public. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny, Jerome and I were talking before. Um, and one of the things we we're talking about is that um, while, while a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are formed by trauma, mil military people especially are, fo are formed by like a very specified form of trauma. Like you get jumped in, you get jumped in the military. Like uh, I know I was in the Marine Corps and the first thing that happens, you, you arrive in Paris Island in the middle of the night and some drill instructor comes on the bus and yells at you and, you know, you pull you off there and then they're yelling at you and you don't sleep for 72 hours. And then just, I mean, and, and then it goes from there. Right. Um, you know, and then we have the various traumas associated, not just with our, our entry into service, but during the service and stuff like that. So, um, we all are in the military have that common trauma bond. Uh, and so if you've never been in there and you see two folks who are either in the military, especially in the same service or especially if they were ever in the same unit or something like that, there's instantly a whole set of things they already know they have in common. There's instantly a whole set of things they already know. Uh, they already know all the inside jokes already just, just established, right? We know that. And so you can, you can operate on that level. So um, it's been fun, you know, interacting with Jerome online, you know, knowing some things that, that we can talk about some things that we can rip each other about, and, and I really enjoyed that. Um, Jerome, why don't you why don't you start us off and tell us about you know when you were you were little Jerome, you know, getting up coming up before you got off off into the Air Force. Uh, yeah, so I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I come from a I'm from Memphis, and like I have last name Hardaway. I'm I come from like a weird like basketball family. So uh, not, not Penny, not Penny, is it? Actual, yeah. So, oh man! Oh yeah. man! So you know, people is very, and that's the favorite part about being in tech. A lot of people don't pick up on that. Uh, but I came from that, and but because I was always technical, and as a kid, I also came from big boxing background. Uh, well, I started boxing was like four or five, and never really shied away from it. Absolutely loved it. Did silver gloves. Uh, meddled in that, was on the Air Force boxing team, meddled in that, um, just kept, you know, doing nerd stuff while the whole time I like, I liked paintology, uh, mythology, everything that, you know, when you're, you know, in a predominantly black area, uh, city is weird. You know, you're the, always the weird kid, but I had boxing to lean on and the family name. So no one really wanted to bully me because I was cool by proxy. But, you know, that, that was me as a kid. And then I ended up going to the military. I actually had a scholarship for Pacific University uh, in Hawaii. And I ended up going to the Air Force because I had a cousin that wanted to go to the Air Force. And my, our parents talked us into going in together so that they, we could do like some buddy system thing. And that was how I ended up making the decision in the Air Force. And it was a <laughs> unique decision like one of those things or you know what as a child I, they as a kid I was like qualified to make that decision and my parents definitely should like have thought twice about that but it all worked out in the end so I'm cool with it <laughs> no I think it, it is interesting when we talk about you know the the, the, the cats that, that joined the military like right out of high school you know those, those recruiters are, are taking you to taking you to Hardy's 
you know, when you're 17, you know, you're like, oh, come on down, come hang out. You know, they, and they, 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 you know, talk you up real nice. They give you all the free stuff just to, just to get you signed line. And they are really some of the best salesmen in the world, because if you can sell that experience to somebody, like you can sell anything. If you can sell being a Marine to anyone, you can definitely do it. Like Air Force is easy because they're like, oh yeah, our food is great. And you know, you're, I mean, life is going to suck. But it's not going to suck as much as those other guys. Yeah, the suck is relative. So it's like, you know, sign me up. I never, I scored an 86 on the ASVAB, and the Air Force recruiter got me, and they were trying to hurry up and get my cousin in. So they were like, oh, we could just sign you up to be like security forces as a cop. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. And then this Navy recruiter called because, you know, they report the ASVAB scores. I didn't know that. Uh, they get the recruiters your ASVAB scores. And this Navy recruiter called and she was like, wait, you're going to Air Force V Security Forces? She's like, you could have any job you want. And she laughed and hung up the phone on me. And like, that was like my experience, the Navy. She just laughed and she said, you could have had any job you want. And went click. And I was like, oh, what's that about? And like, <laughs> that's my Navy recruiter experience at, in 2004. <laughs> but the Air Force guy was super nice to me. I was already in shape. And so he's like, oh, drones going to have a it's gonna have a fine time. Oh, yeah, I don't know yeah, about you're, gonna, and, uh, you're just so, gonna you're gonna fly through the Air Force Boot Camp. Yeah, if you're in shape already. Yeah, that's what it was. I flew through Air Force Boot Camp because you'd be amazed how many people, and that's where my like focus of the fundamentals kind of comes from. You'd be amazed how many people just don't show up to boot camp in shape, like across the board. Like that's the bare minimum metric that's gonna make your life easy, is just having the ability to pass that the physical thing so you can focus on a mental aspect of it. And they just don't do it. And I've never understood that. Like even, and that's one thing that's, you know, when it came to coding, when it came to, when it comes to anything, I really focus on the fundamentals because it's those fundamental things, that core set of skills that always comes back and bites you. And, you know, that's even, you know, boxing the same way. You can tell the people that didn't focus on their, you know, keeping their chin down, punching from their chin, using their jab. And I'm sure it's the same with jujitsu. Like you can tell the people that really didn't focus on, you know, the fundamentals of guard work to be able to actually, you know, everybody wants to do the, you know, the fancy flying triangle stuff, but you know, they don't want, they haven't drilled those high percentage moves that arm bar to triangle to leg lock, like combination 3000 times. So it's like, okay, you know, it's cool that you can bounce off the wall and do like a spinning anaconda like suplex move, but then you just got caught by like a 120 pound like kid who got you an arm bar because you didn't remember how to get out of it or to see it or forecast for it. Like you just look yourself open. So congratulations. And so, oh, so yeah, it's a, it was a bit of segue. It's funny you talk about that. There, there, there. The, there's the techniques and then there's the, the fundamentals, right? And yeah. so you can practice the techniques. Right. You can practice how to do an arm bar. You can practice how to do the sweep. You can practice how to do, you know, this takedown. But then there's the fundamentals behind it. Right. So when I talk about the fundamentals, like the technique is you grab a collar, you grab a sleeve, you know, you shrimp on your side and you sit your legs and sweep. Right. That's a technique. But the fundamental is I need to take away your post on one side. I need to control your upper body. Right. And then, yes, I need to, yeah. And I need to, I need to pull your base on the mine so that I can, so that you're light in the hips. And then I need to move your hips. Right. Those are the fundamentals behind that. And so when we relate that into like, like tech, right. Um, I can learn the syntax, right. And I can just, I can just re, you know, I can regurgitate um, functions that I've memorized. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but when I learn the why, right. When I learn the, the, how the things work underneath, um, then I can rearrange things in a better, in a better way. Right. So that way, like in jujitsu, if I don't have exact control of your sleeve and I don't have exact control of your your collar in the right place, right? But I can get, I can grab a hold of your elbow and I can pull your head down, right? I can still sweep you, and the same as the guy sweep because the fundamentals are there. Um, so if I don't necessarily remember like this one specific code, or if I can't use this one thing in this one way, right? But I still remember the fundamentals. I can still move bits around the way I need to move them, um, in, in under any circumstance, right? And so that's the difference between learning the technique right and then learning the fundamentals and so one of the things that the i think is very interesting when we talk about how we learn in the military um a lot of cats get by just on learning the techniques they just regurgitate stuff they learn right and those cats will make it to you know you know 
NCOs, maybe they'll make it like E45, yeah, but E5. the cats that make it beyond that, right? Or the ones that are really the high performers are the ones that learn the why behind it. They learn the strategies, they learn the, the technologies. Um, they become, you know, you know, masters of their craft and what they're doing. And those are the cats you see when, when stuff goes sideways, you can't pick some of those ones you go to. Yes. Yes. And we, I, I speak that people, I speak that to my troops all the time. I speak that to even civilians. Like, no, fundamentals matter. Fundamentals absolutely matter. It's not what you can do. It's the why you did it. Right. You have to be able like in an interview. All right. You know, especially because, you know, I'm in JavaScript and I'm in a front and heavy world and I'm like, okay. Um, Tailwind was the hot, was a new hotness, and it's a hotness, right? We're like, yeah, it's the buzz. And I talked to uh, troops. I'm like, all right, you have a small SPA. It doesn't really do anything. So why are you using a utility-based framework that, you know, it's, you, it's designed, like utility-based frameworks are designed for large web apps. They're not, you know, they're not, they're used to scale big apps but you know you have three pages so why did you do this when you could have showcased your css skills more i'm like what you're doing like it's cool that you could do this but what you've done is for me as a senior is you put a question in my head of do you actually know css because you picked something to do all the heavy lifting for you right so where is your css game at right so that and that's where we that's where i, I focus on like educating my, my troops are educating juniors in general it's like you know be intentional with your education and your you know building and learning on fundamentals because these are the things that you know i'm going these are the these are the ways that people think these are ways that people that you want to hire think because you know i'm always in this industry on that side i'm always trying to see how can i help them you know how i can open up their eyes i'm like you know could be intentional with that process because if you're not what's going to happen is you know you're going to have a skill set but you're not going to have the answers for the why of that skill set and things of that nature so you know and this is very fun because we both come from military and combat backgrounds so we're very much like oh you know we pretty much agree on everything all the time <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and you know we're also weird yeah we're like weird because like we're the military veterans in a room full of civilians um, that, are, that lean left and we're not the type of veterans they get to see a lot it's not pushed by the media you know fox news hasn't ever has never invited me to you know be on their yeah. show they're not going to invite me <laughs> well, i think uh, i think it's important that like you know there there are no cultural monoliths whether whether veterans rather whether black people and especially among black veterans right um, yeah. it, 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 I think it's really, um, it's one of those things where, you know, depending on, you know, if you look at, at who joins the military, right, the most, it's people in the South. It's poor people in the South. Yeah, right. right. Um, and so, like, black people are very overrepresented, um, not very overrepresented, but black people are over, overrepresented in the enlisted ranks, especially junior enlisted ranks, and un, far underrepresented in the officer ranks. Um, Your apps, everything you said is true. Um, Sixty percent of women in the enlisted ranks are black and brown, and that's something that isn't reflected on the officer rank or isn't refle reflected in the VA's numbers of people that use VA services, um, because we've created this. Um, not, I don't think we've created it. I think the country has created this idea that if you're like not a six foot one do with a beard that is white you don't pass as a veteran and you see it all the time where women and minorities they get their veteran uh, status questioned because they don't fit what people think is it you know no one looks like we all don't look like chris evans so oh, it's one gosh. of those things <laughs> there 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 are so many women that i know of like in, in mill vet twitter right that they're questioned over and over and over again and it's it's beyond stupid right because nine times out of ten the folks questioning them are never served in the military themselves there was um gosh what is her name she's a a, a twitch streamer uh twitch streamer named emory and i can't remember what her, what her name is but um somebody was trying to argue with her saying that she wasn't a real vet and she did the mic drop with her picture because she was a ranger yeah and he was like <laughs> 
an she was a person from like the 90s or some shit. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, that was it, hilarious. It, if that at all, I don't even know this her, but she she had it with her the beret with her combat uh or the her combat uh, arms, combat, right, yeah, combat arms uh, uh a ribbon, you know, the airborne. And I was like, I was like, look, man, I don't don't come for these women. Right. Yeah. Because never tell mind. that all the time. Like the yeah. um v VWC, the I'll tell you the, the most dangerous person in VWC is a woman. I was like, mm -hmm. Aaron was EOD. I was yeah. like, you know, you don't want attention to detail. You know, her first job, her main like she was an officer in EOD. Like, you know, she used to be able to disable bombs i'm like i don't know how to disable bombs i'm like don't don't ask me for nothing no. I, mm -hmm. none of my jobs have any of that haptic feedback and no. and, no. she, <laughs> and she told me the story and she was like well it was either jump out of planes or learn how to disable bombs so i was like i'm not jumping out of planes so i was like Wait, Wait. you in the, you in the air force you were yeah she was army she okay. was army and she was yeah. like no, uh, if I have to choose between jumping out of planes or building, uh, disab disabling bombs, I'm gonna go over here with a bomb squad. It's like that is crazy because I would have chose planes. <laughs> it, was just, it was very funny. But I do think it's interesting when we're talking about like some of the things, especially like because we know as vets that that women have to go through just an extraordinary amount of BS yes. in the military, right? Already, right? Is a very masculine kind of toxic masculine kind of thing. Very a men, toxic. <laughs> a, a lot of men already underestimate women, and 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 they do that based strictly on physical characteristics, right? Yes. And and I will admit, like most of the women that I've ever worked with, when I was in the in the Marine Corps, they couldn't lift as much as I could. They couldn't do as many pull ups as I could. Could I carry a heavier pack? Sure, right. Um, but that said, that didn't mean that they were weren't still stronger and faster and better than at least half the half the men I served with. Right? My and, the way I look at it is like how Jim Mattis puts it, like you know James Mattis. I shouldn't call him Jim, like I know him. Um, <laughs> Jimmy boy, how you doing? Yeah, Mad Dog is another night. Oh no, no, don't call him that. He's gonna, <laughs> I'm never gonna I'm call not, him that into it. I'm face. not having General Mass come after me. <laughs> but you know, he said, you know. Combat and military is a thinking man's game, and we keep trying to put the status on brutality and like brute force when really it's the people, you know, like look no further than what the type of uh, situations we are in now. You know, last year, two years ago, we had uh, he who must not be named screaming about more steam on Navy ships. This year, we've had what? three cyber terrorist attacks, uh, a gas line attack. We had, a, I think, a food uh, organization, like a food company, like pipeline attack. Yeah. Um, last year we had, you know, because of uh, fake news and stuff, we had a person try to blow up and take uh, AT&T call center offline in Nashville. So the way that, you know, combat's changed, but because, uh, you know, we're looking for this, like, alpha maleness in combat when combat it's not male or female it's you know fluid it's dynamic um we are not evolving with that and i see that in a tech community tech culture which has always made me super i've always been weird about the toxic masculinity in, in tech because i'm like where is where did where did this broiness comes like no one's tell no one's able to point out the historical point in life in tech where Everyone became very broy and alpha male, and you know, I was like, "Y'all know we push pixels, right?" Like, right. <laughs> well, right. It's, yeah. it's super interesting because you'll see. Like, I remember, you know, I, I'm long enough in the tooth where I remember, like, pre 2000, pre pre, you know, Y two K, pre dot com boom, right? And it was a bunch of nerds, really, just a bunch of nerds um, that were rich, right? And so <laughs> they didn't joined. know they, they didn't know how to act. Right, they didn't know how to act at all, and so you got people um, who were acting the fool, right? But what ended up happening is end up being like all frat broy afterwards, and I don't know why. I don't know where tech bros came from. I don't know where they came from I because, and 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 when I when I look at it, right? Because I see in tech bros a lot of the same stuff I used to see in you know the folks out the barracks, right? You know what I'm saying? On Friday night, they go out to the club and act full. It was the same behavior, right? But at yeah. least the people who are out there in the club, out there out in, out in town, who are in the military, right? Those cats had been through something, 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? They come back for something. They're cutting loose or something. These, the most of the tech bros I've ever seen have never had any weight on their very narrow shoulders in their lives. The toxic right. masculinity in the military is a side effect of the brutality of the military. In it tech, is. the toxic masculinity comes from. I don't know. I think, and, and this is just this is just my conjecture. And folks out there can you can say it, it's true, say it's not. Please feel free to comment in the in the chat, whatever. But to me, it's when they try to equate pushing pixels around to war, right? Or like teams, they, oh, we're you know fighting this. We got to grind it away so we can build this startup, and we got to work all these hours to push all these pixels. And like you know, they 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 build these kind of grand kind of. Um, you know, delusions of grandeur around the work they're doing. And I'm not saying it's not hard work and I'm not saying that they don't work long hours, but it is not actually in the trenches from someone who actually has been in a trench. That ain't it, bruh. Yeah. I tell people like, not like <laughs> you this know? is every time I'm in a situation I'm like, you know, I've, 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 I've most teams I'm on, I've always been the person that stays calm. Like, I've been the person to handle stuff because of my calmness. And they're like, yeah. why are you so calm? I'm like, well, we could all be getting shot at right now. <laughs> right, like, exactly. I've, I've been in that life. Yeah. And I'm like, there's absolutely, I, I never forget talking to a, um, a manager. He's like, oh, you're so calm. And I was like, well, we could all be having to deal with mortar attacks. So like, I've yeah. done that. I was, like, I was 20 when that was going down. And I was like, I'm in a job where absolutely where like no one's trying to kill me pretty cool so I'm like why I don't know I don't get it because I'm like all we do is like we get paid a lot of money to think hard and then write what we think and make it work it's like writing a book that has to do things so I'm like why are yeah. we why are y'all so angry <laughs> and, like, and like i don't want to take away from the stress that especially the people who have to do the the chopping water carrying wood have to deal with right because it is a stressful situation that, that they get put in a lot but they usually get put in those situations by people above them who don't understand how trivial the work they're doing actually is yes you know, and, and and so when they they try to you know make it seem like it is this grand thing of, of huge import, well, it's only important to people to their investors, and only marginally so because yeah, they want money. I, I you told, know, it's important. It's important to their dreams, but not important. Like I, you know, security forces has a fifty-one percent like dropout rate. You either injure out, uh, die, or quit. Right. That's it. Those are three ways to get out of security forces or you because they don't they don't retrain you because security forces is, you know, hard enough to get people to join it. So, like, those are the three ways. And I was talking with my wife like a week ago and I because I just, you know, I'm always researching like the pay ranks and stuff like that. Like, I would have been an E6 if I had stayed in the military and been around and done all that. I've been making half of what I make right now after 10 years in the military. Yeah. And could you imagine, like, you know, I, I was certified on uh, M4, M9, M249, Bravo, um, M2, yeah, M240, Bravo, M249, uh, small arms tech uh, tank. I was like, all this stuff, yeah, uh, like, all this, all these weapons and being put in these crazy situations like you know oh let's go and take the doctors into a village and help them you know do medical stuff with the women let the women doctors and the female doctors work with the women and hope we don't get ambushed and i, I was like making like twenty eight thousand dollars a year and I was, i'm like yo that is wild compared to like i'm making like 130 and i'm uh, i just sit at home like yeah. <laughs> and play with my kids, like and dogs. Like, why are why are we why are we tripping? Like, why are we why are we like what's going on in our in the mentality here? I'm like, this is like you've never been in 112. You're like, have you ever been? I was like, have you ever been 115 degree heat where the situation is? Oh, the water was compromised, so now you had to make sure that all the um, insurgents that you caught, uh, they make that they're fed and watered correctly, and you may uh, die of hydration. Like I've been in that situation, so don't like. Why are y'all angry? I don't get it. And I, I don't know. The community, the culture of tech, still 
the broiness of culture and tech still bothers me. And, you know, like, I try to be an equalizer because I feel like people think I'm bro in tech. I'm like, I'm not bro in tech. This is who I am. I'm like, I am like, I am a black person, combat veteran who turned into a technologist. Yeah. So this is my culture. And I use that privilege of who I am to shield people who aren't like that. When I see those tech bros come in, like, you know, I don't say a lot of things anymore about, you know, Black Lives Matter and things like that, because there are people who are way more qualified than me and way more understanding, like, you know, on how to be anti racist than me. Mm-hmm. I amplify them. Now, my job is I get in when, you know, somebody decides they want, you know, to buck because, you know, Kim is a girl and I'm going to talk, you know, I'm going to talk at Kim, like, you know, like I lost my mind. I'm like, oh, we're not going to do that. Time out. I'm going to, like, I tell people, I'm an Avenger. I'm there when you guys, <laughs> but I, I, I'm there to avenge. If y'all don't do anything stupid, you won't see me like y'all can't have conversations then i gotta get involved and yeah i'll make everybody feel bad so like that's where like that's where i leverage being like military and being alpha and knowing all this stuff about combat and like because i'm like this is like it's used i use it to you know be the equalizer in situations where people may not be able to but people are getting bullied, right? Because that's our job, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, my job is to stop the bullies, right? And sometimes you gotta remember, remind people that yo, how you're talking does not match up with your record. So I need you to simmer down, chill, <laughs> lower your voice. Yeah, and yeah, you take your shoulders <laughs> off, go ahead, like the bass out your voice, like you know, this is Twitter, chill. And yeah. it's just, it's a very, you know, it's a very weird, like space to a spot to be in because, like, you know, I tell people now, like, you know, people say that it wasn't, this wasn't problems. I know these are always problems. Just people didn't have yeah. the leverage to the opportunity to speak up without punishment. You know, nineties, like our parents, my parents at least, um, had to endure like living in a world where you couldn't tell white people they were fucking up without losing a job. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, I understand the privilege that we have, like, you know, and, and we've learned that of like being in the military, being in combat, like there is more, there, there is, more chaos when uh, caste or cultures or races are getting closer to equality, they're getting further from equality. Like the peace that you see in a lot of cultures is usually between everybody is already in a place and they're not getting that opportunity for upward mobility from like whatever is the ruling class. When you see the chaos, that means that the opportunities of the class that wasn't able to, or the class, caste, wherever part of the country you're at, uh, part of the planet you're at, is able, is, is getting closer to whoever the dominant power is. And like, you learn that, you know, I mean, have you ever seen yeah. a country destabilized? You, you learn, you know, you learn that. Yeah, and it's a pattern, pattern you see through history over and over and over again. Regard, regard, you, know, in, you know, you see it in Europe, you see it in, 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 in the East, you see it. So, like, it, it is just a pattern when people have power and the people who didn't have power or privilege start to gain some, the people who were in power feel threatened and they will start taking measures to, to prevent that. Yes, so. and... That's what we're trying. What we're trying to do, and it's always violent. And I hate to say that because you know all this arguing and Twitter fighting and stuff. I see it, and I'm like, it's because you know I know the social aspect of it. People are threatened, and because you know suddenly they're the bad guy, and they never thought they were the bad guy. And Mm -hmm. you know when you find out you're the villain of the story, it's hard. So, but I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's crazy. Like you thought you were the superhero, and no, oh, you turned out to be the Joker. Like it's yeah. you know, it's wild. So you know, and I value people who are doing the work because I know that's that stuff's mentally taxing, and that's why I try to amplify because I also know that even though I work with veterans, like it's real easy for me to come into the room and you know take over this conversation because you know, and the same I'm sure that you've discovered because of your background you know, particularly white men, they pause, they listen because they know that yo, you have that reverence of, you know, having served your country. And mm-hmm. I try not to execute on that a lot because I want to make sure, because, you know, it's frankly wrong because part of the thing of being American is, you know, just because I did things for the country doesn't mean my voice it should outweigh someone like Kim's. So Kim should be able to get the same level of like, a power of listening that I do without the same reverence 
without having to do what I did. Like that's why I did what I did. Yeah. Right. I did what I did. So Tim can talk to you and tell you what you did wrong. And you listen, not for you to not listen to her. And then I have to come and just, you know, mansplain what she said, say it with more confidence and, you know, less, <laughs> less experience for you to get it. Like, it doesn't make sense. So, uh, and that's like my, especially now, like when, between the Vetsuko stuff, like I try to stay, I, I'm trying to focus on products so that way I can help people while like being around if like, people in these movements need help and doing a lot of craziness with, you know, I'm looking at cloud and I'm trying to see how can it serve my minorities and privileged people in tech and like how to use these tools and these systems. So I, how do I get this? Like, how do I be Promethean with it? Like that's yeah. been, you know, they called that my leadership style. I went to a school where they were talking about leadership and they were like, Oh, your leadership style is Promethean. You're the idea person and you want to be the person that brings fire to the people. And I was like, all right, but how do I be Promethean with like a lot of this stuff? Like, how do I like, you know, AWS with the pay scale stuff and now with the payments and people sometimes can't afford it. So learning how to leverage GitHub Actions and Docker so it's more affordable for people to mm -hmm. learn, you know, cloud architecture and serverless stuff, you know, and, you know, A, you know, infrastructure as code, right? So that's been my, you know, that I've been doing a bunch of stuff like that and trying to not be, trying to not be, uh, be, a person is amplifying people who need to be heard versus a person talking as much this year yeah. while also wanting to, you know, I'm like, everybody, I tell everybody, no, I'm here if you need me. <laughs> so Drew, I want to, I want to talk a little bit like, so what was your, what was your pathway into tech from air force security forces? And what were some of the, some of the, some of the roadblocks and obstacles you had along the way there? Oh man, I had every roadblock obstacle, but my pathway was pretty, uh, saw a commercial about, going to a for-profit college school. I was like, I am, I'm not going to do that. And then uh, I picked up a book at Star, uh, Starbucks, not Starbucks, Barnes & Nobles. I just keep thinking of Starbucks because that's where I was at when I saw the computer section. <laughs> <laughs> Went there, got a book on databases, learned SQL, ended up working with Department of Homeland Security for a, a time uh, through SQL, um, with dealing with SQL. And then I moved home, ended up getting a digital, uh, marketing admin job, but I was always coding on the side. And then crazy stuff happened in 2014 that just made me launch Vetsu Code. And I was helping a family in need, a veteran's family in need, a veteran just died, helping his family in need, who was in need. And I just started, you know, I raised $10,000 over the course of 27 hours, helped that family. And I was ready to go back to sleep. And everybody was like, you can't do that. Uh, like, cause like that, this is where like no good deed goes unpunished. Like I tell people that Friday I was playing hooky from work. I was in a bed with my girl. I was about to do really adult things. I got the call to help. It's like, uh, okay. I helped. <laughs> and then people were like, you just can't go back to being a normal person anymore. I was like, this is garbage. I don't appreciate this like at all. Like, and I've been, doing their good fight all oh, <laughs> i've been fighting the i've been doing the best code thing ever since because <laughs> oh no yeah, as, yeah as my my four-year-old so it's yeah. just how it is you oh, know. i'm gonna have one i'm gonna have one so like i'm having a oh. newborn you know and oh, what man. i got three more months yeah so get that get that rest now man shoot wow wife is jumping up she gets up like two three times during the night and she waits turns on lights and netflix and can't go back to sleep <laughs> yeah. i'm on i see me i'm out to drinking coffee and red bull since like eight a.m today <laughs> so that's that's so, where my life is so we're talking about some of the things you've been trying to do to make you know the the um the path for um for folks to learn about you know cloud computing and, and programming a little bit less expensive can you can you tell me about some of the things that you've done um kind of from from the from the ground up with vetsu code and kind of like some of the some of the programs you've offered and some of the things you've done roger that well i built our jamstack curriculum because it helped i it was it was first i want to leverage the technology for vwc because it was essentially a um a original lamp stack app which there wasn't anything wrong but everybody was screaming about react and i felt like react wasn't the way to go but then gatsby came out i was like oh no that's the way to go for this because SEO components, static sites, et cetera. And then 
I started doing more serverless stuff because I was seeing, you know, I, I have been really gifted or really lucky, I guess, in the past five, six years to see the writing on the wall. Um, serverless, I knew serverless and GraphQL and, you know, Microsoft and Azure, AWS. I knew all that stuff was going to blow up um, five, six years when it first came out because I was like, you know, this just makes so much sense. It's so much more empowering, especially for people like me who really at that time wanted to focus on knowing one thing. Um, you know, just being okay with knowing all the JavaScript things, knowing Node and Express, you know, uh, or just even knowing being strong in front end, AWS, S3, all these uh, Azure, they gave me the power to be able to launch full scale apps uh, without being a super back end developer. And I knew if it worked for me, it would work for other people. And so that's what I, that's what we started teaching. Uh, now I'm going through recording uh, process and while also building out the back end for a VWC. So that way we can have, you know, people can come and see the stuff all over. And I'm also recording a leveraging technology to transition out of the military uh, course for people who just, who don't, may not want to learn how to code, but you still need to learn how to leverage technology to transition out, out to tech because, you know, military is like, what, five years behind. And the, tra <laughs> At least. And the tra yeah, and the transition experience, like, I thought it would get better. And there's like, they have skill bridge, but that's the only thing. And it's di it differs from base to base on like how you can use skill bridge. But the harsh reality is the the experience of transitioning out the military is still the same, where it's more focused on getting you off their books versus making sure you can have a happy life post service or you can like have a leg up post service. And that's the thing I want to fix because I don't know if you remember, but I remember going to the transition office and the person who was talking about military transition was a person who served 20 years in the military. And this was this person's second job our first job out of the military, right? Their first job was the military. This is the second job this person ever had. And I was like, you didn't transition. You just went from, you just changed uniforms. That's it. You just went from, you know, you just put on a collared shirt from a, you know, BDU. So, or ABUs in my time. So I was like, that's still the thing. I'm like, it's been almost 11 years. Like I got out like 20, I got out 2010. So yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. And, and I think, Let's say I think it does, especially as people of color are disservice getting out of the military because we already have a hard enough time breaking into tech, right? Uh, you know, under the best of circumstances, like because you know, e even even with all things just you know just being not you know it, it, assuming the best intent, people who are still doing referrals and still like refer their buddies, it's still mostly white males referring mostly white males, right? Yes. So to get there, get yeah. So be able to get out of the military with skills that may be older, but still tangential to, uh, to what, you know, they're doing in tech to get to an entry level position. Um, when you don't have Harvard or you don't have Stanford, you don't have a coding bootcamp on your roles, you don't know how to interview. Right. Um, you don't know, you know, you have a general idea of how to dress. You certainly don't know how to talk to people in a tech environment because your language, right is not is not you know the english that most civilians speak it is it yeah. is you know uh, it is a military patois you know it is and acronyms so, and f-bombs that's what we speak yeah, yeah. Women, and acronyms and f-bombs gestures and stuff like that so and, yes. and so so you have all those things going in there plus being a person of color you had a lot of disadvantages and there's a lot of ways i think we could help um I do know that there are some programs like one I saw when I actually went to go work for AWS when I was in, in uh, our, our um, new employee training, there was uh, classes of folks with nothing but like uh, vet interns where they had like, I think it's like some like 16 or 40 week program they would go through and they would teach them how to be like network specialists or security specialists or something like that. And then yeah, if, at the aren't you tired of that? Like cybersecurity has become a police officer. Yeah. Uh, back in the 90s and early 2000s for veterans. Like, oh, you were in the military, do cybersecurity. I'm like, okay, yeah. but those aren't the veterans I looked up to. The veterans I looked up to was Stan Lee and, uh, you know, Bob Ross, right? Yeah. So I want to be in that 
room of veterans. Why can't I be like, I want to be where I want to be given the room to grow and become the next Bob Ross. I want to be given the room to grow and become the next Stan Lee. I, I, that's, I want to create worlds, right? What's, I want to bring like, so like, that's what I, that's, I think that's the thing with Vets Who Code is I want to create, I wanted to create a program in the like minds of Stan Lee and yeah. Bob Ross, because those are the people that people forget are veterans because they're not the people that you're, they're not the type of veteran that is easy to sell. Yeah. Right. You, I think even beyond that too, just, just beyond just coding, right. There's a yeah. lot of vets that work with power plants. There's a lot of works that work with like, you know, diesel generators, stuff like that. That would be great working for a data center. Right. There's a lot of vets that run, know how to run cable that could work, you know, and do those kinds of things like that, where they could be data center techs. There's a lot of vets that would be amazing project managers, right? Because they can coordinate stuff from all over the country, from various countries, from various services, you know, and get it all there at the right time in the right place under some really, really horrendous conditions. There's an um, AFSC called contracting in the Air Force. Yeah. Like, that's a whole job. And yeah. that's essentially what you just said, program management at scale. They're making yeah. sure everybody gets paid and all the supplies are there and, and all the money and contracts and stuff is done. So, you know, yeah. you don't go into a, you know, fire a foreign country where everybody wants to kick your butt in a place that, you know, no nowhere to live. Like, oh, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. high school. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like training specialists, like I said, recruiters. Sales, <laughs> sales. Right. There's, there's you know, no like, better tech. There's no better tech. There's no better tech sales than like a recruiter. You have yeah. to get it. Like those users are like a one liars. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, there, it's, so, so it's beyond. It's beyond I'm just sorry. learning how to code, right? But there's there so many avenues within tech, right? That we could be getting vets in. Um, yeah. That, that to say that you have to be cybersecurity or you have to be network security. Um, or even just like front end or back end coding, there's there's so many other options. Well, I mean, there. it's all about. I think I think my biggest issue with this with the cyber, excuse me, my biggest issue with cybersecurity is the growth component. Like, what do you do after this? And I think that's one of the things that we as like more senior people need to show. Like, all right, this is how you start. This is how you spread out. Like, this is your goal is to get in tech doing this thing. Now let's talk about your stretch goals. So in case you want to go left, go right, let's say, all right, let's say you want to become an engineering manager. What's the management track? Or let's say, you know, your front end and you want to get into DevOps, right? DevOps is actually a really good um, path to go from front end or even back end as you're going towards full stack, front end, then DevOps and back end. That's a really good path. And you like full stack and then you could become an engineering manager or you become a product owner or a staff engineer because, you know, and like, let's talk about these things. Like, what is a staff engineer? Oh, a staff engineer, they have like, oversight of the technical aspect of the entire of everything of code but they don't they're not doing all the coding but they know all the pieces that work and they know how to get you all the tools and resources you need right mm -hmm. and they do, might code like 20 percent of the time but most of their you know they are high performer whose performance metrics has changed from the output of code they make to you know the collaboration efficiency they make you the junior or you the mid or you the senior right that is what a principal uh, a staff uh, level engineer is right mm -hmm. so you know just being able to share and execute on those things and like teach people that they don't because people don't know that stuff and especially you're new in tech you don't know that you have yeah. no idea that there is such a thing as a staff engineer what's that about or you know yeah. a partner engineer like i was at microsoft I was like who or what like oh that's a like, you're like up here up here i was like yeah i was related to the high level engineers like you know staff principals stuff like that as, as warrant officers right yeah. you know because you know <laughs> i'm going to walk around with my hands in my pockets so i'm going to point to stuff and show you how to do that right if you ask me a question i know the answer but i'm not you know i'm still i'm still out of the office by by 1500 yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm here, but I'm not here. You don't see yeah. anything. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. you, you only never see me take a PT test. You never see. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely every warrant officer that <laughs> I've ever met. Like, yeah, they, they they manage to get scores somehow, but don't don't ever. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, you know like, for y'all that don't know, like 
those like they're like you know they're warrant officers are like a weird diminishing subset in the military where they're not officers but they're not enlisted they're like in the middle and they're not civilians so like you literally have officer corps uh civilian uh enlisted corps then you have the civilians and then somewhere in the middle doing our yeah. own little thing is warrant officers so warrant officer warrant officer doesn't have a commission but they, yeah. yeah they have a promotion warrant to the officer but th other than that you still have to salute them all the kind of stuff like that but they they are below every commissioned officer but above every enlisted person um and you I get to be, weird <laughs> yeah and you get to be a warrant officer by being a technical expert or just being in the army and working on hell and like flying helicopters or something like yes. that yes that's like all, every uh, helicopter pilots like that's the only warrant officers i know all helicopter pilots i was like is that don't like i don't even know anyone else so. they're, just, they're, they're just mechanics <laughs> they <learn> to fly <laughs> helicopters um but I, but I think it's important to know, like, you know, like someone asks, like you know, in the, in the military, especially they're like, oh, how do you get to be a warrant officer? Well, you know, it's, it's not easy. Sure. Um, there are all these paths, but you talk about that. And that's one of the things that they do. It's like, if I want to, if I know, right. If I'm a Lance corporal, what it's going to take to be a corporal, I have to get that cutting score. Right. If I get that cutting score and I have to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, right. Saying if I want to go to corporal sergeant, if I want to get selected for staff sergeant, I got to do this, this, and this. I got to, you know, the, your your goals, your your the things you have to accomplish are pretty well laid out as an established thing, and it's not the same in the civilian job market because it varies from company to company. The roles mean different things everywhere, and so you kind of have to be much more fluid in your expectations, right? Um, yes. But I, but but I, there comes and ask something that I try to teach. Like that chaos comes beauty in the civilian sector because you get to leverage, like you get to kind of forge your own path. And I think when it comes to transition with the military from the military to civilian, that's the hardest thing they have to deal with. Like this, you know, when to a person in the military going into the civilian workforce feels like going to Wild Wild West, where you know the rules don't matter and everybody wins right <laughs> so yeah. like you have to uh, like you said you have to change you have to change your expectations you have to mitigate a lot of things to be able to understand you know like what's the number one issue that i see with veterans all the time networking talking mm -hmm. about themselves like you know it, networking gets the biggest Ugh, sound out of people next to like sales, right? Yeah. Is because they're like, oh, I hate networking. I'm like, well, then you're doing it wrong. I'm like, for me, networking is, you know, making friends with people based upon the things I like, while also learning how to make money with that person. Like that's yeah. that is the people who make money the way I want to make money, but I also like his friends. Like I don't, you know, people say. And someone pointing out, oh, you're always talking about GitHub and you're at Microsoft. So you're like, no, I've been a fan of GitHub before I was at Microsoft. I was a GitHub star before I was at Microsoft. Um, I love GitHub, the product, just like I love VS Code, the product. You asked me about .NET, I'm like, ugh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how I am. That is the right? answer, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, that's where, that's who I am. I'm like, no, you said VS Code, I'm a cheer. You say anything GitHub, I'm a cheer. Dinette, no, not working at Microsoft. So I'm like, that's the thing. Like I say, you know, that's how that's how you um that's how I network, right? Finding people who also love GitHub things, and next thing you know, get, you know, it pays off because you're working with these tools and if people are helping you make money with the things you enjoy and you're not feeling like you're doing work because the things that you enjoy aren't um aren't killing you, right? Yeah. But that's it. Like that's all. And I try to tell him like all I'm doing like you know you and me right. I was like yeah. oh this dude and we we didn't even our first conversation I remember vividly because we weren't even talking about code. There was somebody on Twitter saying something stupid about firearms and swords, yeah. and that was a conversation of how we met. Some dude was like he could like take out a gunman with a sword and i was like i don't know what anime you've been watching but right that you know, ain't like, happening. You know, <laughs> watching that mean while you were while you were doing this i was setting the blade i'm like bro i, I hate to tell you man. Like, like, i don't know a lot, of, like, a lot of people thought that but there's a reason why we don't use swords in <laughs> exactly like if swords if swords are more effective everybody yeah. would have a katana and so Jeremy, Jeremy, real quick i want to ask you a question that came in the chat so we have time to make sure you address this uh, so uh, one of the one of the folks in chat asked, "What advice would you give civilians to best help set up vets for success in tech roles?" 
Um, Grace, I think because I think the marketing of veterans, we're hard workers, we're, we're chargers, and all this other stuff is cool. But you you have to still understand like you're still a subculture coming into another subculture right so understand that this person may not understand things that are like you know there are things about civilian culture i still don't understand and i've been a i've been in civilian culture for like over a decade and i'm still like y'all are wild like it's just weird <laughs> so like just grace like you know like we just said networking you went to college and you know you were in like a civilian, you understand the importance of networking. Civilians don't understand that because, you know, we, just, I mean, military don't understand that because we know, you know, you just do your job, do your job well, and, you know, your supervisor will write an EPR for you, and then, like, your performance report, and then you go and, you know, you take this packet and you send it to these special schools and jobs, but your supervisor knows it's their job to, like, prepare you for the next level, and that's not, you know, the norm in civilian. And the norm is really, it's your responsibility to um, prepare yourself for the next level. It's your uh, responsibility to get the resources and tools you need to be able to, you know, get uh, to step up and uh, get step up in like another level in anything, right? That's not your supervisor's job. What are you talking about? That's insane, right? Like that is how, like that's how crazy, like how crazy separate those worlds are, right? Yeah. You know, our job, you know, my perform, our, you know, military, our collaborative state is from the gate, the most important thing, because you are no, we, we come from a mentality, you're no better than the weakest person on your team, right? So regardless of how much of a high performer you are, it, it doesn't matter if the whole team is hurt, right? Yeah. So there is no, you know, we, we get that. In civilian sector, even if you're on a team, there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. And that's another thing that you have to, like, you know, asking for, asking for help. Another thing that veterans are really bad at across the board, present parties included. <laughs> we will yeah. like we are horrible at asking for help because we come from a culture where needing help is bad. You're the you know you're the hero. You're not a damsel in distress. You're not supposed to be uh, needing help. So what happens is you come from that culture uh, that you know is toxic as we've already stated and you bring that into the civilian sector where you know asking for help you might as well you know no i'll jump off this building first like i'm never gonna <laughs> ask for help and that's not healthy so you have to create an area of grace and you have to check in like one things i do is like you know it's almost like what I do with my wife, right? Because she was grazed by a Marine. Like, oh my God, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> so she's pregnant and, and she's third trimester. She's always hungry. And she, but she doesn't want to make, put me out my way by saying she's like hungry at like 10 8 p.m. or 2 a.m. or something like that. So, but if I, she'll be tossing and turning. I'm like, yo, I'm hungry. I'm going to go down to the kitchen. Do you want me to get you something? And then, of course, she comes up with this whole menu of ideas. <laughs> but because I know that from a, this comes from a place of being raised by a Marine who, and Marines don't, they don't know how to ask for help. And Look, I, don't, I don't need you to yell at me right now. <laughs> don't say the quiet first out loud. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you screaming at me, Jerome? <laughs> so, all right. Military people don't know how to sc uh, say all, all of us. <laughs> uh, military people don't know how to, so I won't sing anyone out. Military people don't know how to ask for help. My wife is very self sufficient. And she, you know, she gets that from her dad where she doesn't like asking for, uh, she doesn't like feeling like she's a burden on people. So you have to create or areas like you know you're not a burden on me right it's beyond one-on-one it's like you know trying to make sure that this person knows that hey yo i'm looking out for you even though i'm doing my thing i don't the kp especially if you're a senior i feel like too many seniors are too focused that shift of going from my job is to make the team better to my job is to get my work done it's so hard for civilians to make because like the civilian workforce like ideology is so self-centered from you know the gate so that shift of club being that you that the team wins is how you win it's so weird yeah. um for them but in the military that's not it but also you know you have to be okay like as a veteran you have to be okay with not 
knowing what you're talking about, right? Because yeah. veterans, like I said, veterans don't know how to ask for help. And that's one thing that I'm always, I'll just, I'll regularly like ping someone. I'm like, hey, do you need help on this thing? Or, hey, I, I know I um, had a project where I was doing some contracting and I had, you know, I was seeing veterans who were talking about doing freelance stuff. And I was like, so I'm going to do this contract. Let me show you what I'm doing. Like I started walking yeah. through this, the tools I use and everything. And they're like, oh, okay. And I made sure I, you know, this is how I set it up. This is how I set up my payment system, everything. And they were like, wow, I learned so much today. I was like, I knew you didn't know what you were doing. I didn't want <laughs> to, you know, muck this up. So I just want to make sure that I showed you how to do it. And that's, you know, that's what you need to do as a leader. You know, <laughs> look at, look for the quiet parts. I guess it's the best part because, you know, um, people usually don't uh, people usually don't ask you the question that's behind the question. So you have to always look for that. Yeah, I would say it's interesting because you do when we talk about like how we were jumped in. Right. Uh, and, you know, you, you never want to be the person that couldn't do it. Right. Yes. That, that was the worst thing you do. If you could person who fell out of a march person who couldn't, you know, who couldn't qualify in the rifle person who couldn't qualify with the grenades, you know, person. Oh, yeah, they would rag you. It was like, yeah. Oh no. Like, I never, I remember somebody getting like viciously yeah. made fun of like, like, like oh, you no. know, like, you know, you, you definitely didn't, we definitely didn't want to be the person who couldn't get that gas mask on in time. Right. You know, like there were, there were a lot of harsh penalties for being the one who couldn't. Right. Yeah. And, you didn't want to be the first to make everybody do PT. Like yeah. that was the thing. Like, and, oh no. If I if we like, get in trouble, I don't want to be my fault. <laughs> yeah. And like and the, the thing is with the military, it is designed to do that. It is designed to weed out the people that can't. Not to help people can. Yeah. Right. Because life and death is the game though. Here yeah. though, that's not yeah. that, that's and, not the and, and that's the thing, right? It that's not how it's supposed to be in tech. That's not how it is. People trying to make it like that. Right. You have this as, oh, well, you know, knows the grindstone. And I had to do this back then. So we're going to make our do. No, you don't have to be like that. Again, this is not really like death. Y'all, we're exactly. like, like you said at the beginning, we're pushing pixels around. Right. And so I think yeah, yeah. that when we talk about what can help people going forward, right, is not to gatekeep, right. And certainly not to like punish, but to nurture. Of course. I mean, coming from front end world, uh, my thing was, why do we need people to know linked lists when the biggest joke in our industry is how hard it is to center a div? Like, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I will never be front end. <laughs> front end is front end is stressful, but it's a, it's not like in the world stressful. It's like, oh well, everybody's gonna have an opinion about my work. This is awesome. Like, yeah. I have eighty thousand bosses now. Like, everyone <laughs> knows that knows how to do what you do better it's very funny like oh you suck like, oh, all right Jerem, we got we got about a minute left give me your give me your last minute give me your what you want to what you want to pitch what you want to promote what you want to what you want to say roger that uh just follow us on vets code um at twitter at vets code or follow me at jerome and if you're a junior and you're ever looking for help uh don't hesitate to like slide in my dms i actually have one-on-one -on -one with a troop with a civilian today i'm going to go over a lot of his work uh, to help him because he wants to start my front end master's course and he wants you know he needs some feedback so if you need help uh don't hesitate to ask all right everybody jerome hardaway veteran technologist and all-around good person um dangerous boxer and one of these days one of these days we're gonna grapple one of these days we got gonna, you man like no gi i'm ready i'm ready yeah, all right. <laughs> like, all i don't right. do i don't know how to do gi i don't i've never you i've never rolled in gi I'm, i mean see see these metals back there i see them i see them. i mean i know i know it's like, right, right, right. like well, <laughs> most, 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 of, most of those most of those are no gi just so you know see i'm look i look i know it's an ass whooping i'm not running around here my my expectations are not like they're a little closer to the ground like you know what if I can go around without tapping, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm Tim Banks. This has been Solid State. Thank y'all for thank y'all for joining. Please smash that uh, subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter. Um, just keep coming back. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you later.